Welcome. In this demonstration of GeoTime, we're going to walk through some tools available to you when working with crisis maps and how they can help you better observe geotemporal patterns that emerge. In a 2D overhead view, we can watch the events, represented by dots, and movement between events, represented by lines connecting dots, animate to show the evolution of conflicts over time. However, as time passes by, much of the data is obscured and therefore lost. In GeoTime's 3D view, we can see time on the vertical axes and space on the ground plane. The newest events appear on the bottom. With an unobstructed view of the temporal aspect of the data, we can immediately see that there's a gap. Let's select this data and add an annotation in order to emphasize the area we're observing. Viewing this gap in data prompts questions we may want to ask. For example, is data missing? Or is this an example of regional stability? Visually, this form of analysis can function to help you validate the data you've entered. We can capture this view in a snapshot in order to refer to it later or communicate it in a report. With large data sets such as ACLID, we want to engage methods that allow analysts to use GeoTimes pattern tools. For example, the Gap Finder allows us to find other periods of inactivity in order to search for regional stability. Querying for gaps of three or more years generates several results we may want to investigate. We select one three-year gap, which shows the movements of the Katanga rebels. Let's zoom into this gap, which we can see is highlighted. And let's add data back in to see what other movements can correlate with this. For example, here we can see the movements of the CNL correlate perfectly with the gap in the movements of the Katanga rebels. We can annotate this time gap and include our hypothesis for this pattern. For example, Perhaps the Katanga met rebels merged with the CNL, or the CNL temporarily won out during a territorial dispute. I can add these and other observations in the reports panel on the side. Now let's walk through some other insights we found in the ACLA data set. For example, we've updated the time gap we previously observed. You notice that it ranges from 1967 to 1991. During this period, we can polarize the conflicts into two zones. For example, the military coup in Uganda, which is on the east, and the conflict. We've also observed some coordinated movements in the data, where one or more groups have repeatedly met in the same area. Perhaps these are rival conflicting groups clashing with each other, or maybe several groups have met up in the same alley. We found these using the meeting finder by setting the time space extents of a meeting and querying it in a database. Since we know all of these events are meetings, we can now remove the annotations that surround them and focus on the groups which are involved. We can do this by isolating only objects in our Pivot 2 screen. As the charts reveals, the three groups involved include the Tanzanian rebel troops, the UN Alliance, and the UPDF. This poses a question we may want to ask. Why are these groups constantly in the same places? Additionally, are they rivals or are they allies? We can annotate the space-time extents of all their meetings. We know that these meetings occur from January 20, 1979 to May 28, 1979. They occur over the six-month period with an area of 515 square kilometers. Finally, let's focus on areas prone to conflict. The chart annotation reveals the top 30 cities with the most active activity within this data set. For example, here we can see that certain cities, such as Bujumbura, Huru, Freetown, and Brazzaville, have an unusually high amount of activity. Thank you for watching this demonstration of some of GeoTime's crisis mapping capabilities. If you have any questions, Please do not hesitate to contact us for more information.